it's time for the Frank Ski Show. Introducing the Frank Ski Show. I can hear the turn of my... One and only Neo is in the building. Indeed, indeed. My hey, homie from a long man. time hey, with man, another brother. album. I'll be good, man. Are you no, ready? Uh, brother, come on. Stay ready. Stay ready so you don't got to get ready. A pimp told me that one time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got I got to start the interview by telling you. So um, we heard that uh, TLC uh-huh. was, you know, going out um, to try to raise money to do their that. new album. Yeah. Right? And we talked about that on the air, just the fact, you know, they're going uh, to get money for the new album. Mm-hmm. And the first thing I said was, if TLC wants to come back mm-hmm. with an album, there's only one person, didn't I say this? Mm-hmm. Only one person they need to go see. Mm-hmm. That's you. That's love. That's, That's love. you. Because nobody can write them a song like you can write them. Well, like you, you, you on the writer's plateau, dude. That's love, brother. I appreciate you that. You know what I mean? And that. a lot of people don't understand that mm-hmm. you, you're not only a performer, you not only sing, but you also write yeah, and man. put it all together and produce. Yeah, I do that first. I do that before anything else. Chili, T Boz, holla at your boy. I got y'all. Come on now. Come on, ain't, ain't even, I'll even give y'all the homie discount. Come on. We ain't even, we ain't even got to go there with it. It's they all have, good. They have 135000 so far. So right, they give got me, they'll, give me they'll, $20 and some Cheetos. We good. You know, <laughs> that's family. We good. I got y'all. Whatever y'all need. You could, you could do that. I could. I could. I, I'm waiting on the phone call. You know, for football. people that don't know, you know, Neo has written like classics for so many artists, mm-hmm. including putting Beyonce mm-hmm. on the platform mm-hmm. that she is now. Like that album that changed who Beyonce mm-hmm. was. That's like Neo. Absolutely. Right there. Indeed. Indeed. It's when, love. When you um, are talking to artists because they, you know, people will not know about the writing until you're up front and you're famous and all that. And mm-hmm. do, you, do you take the time to tell them where the real money is and to explain to them the craft of what it takes to be a true, you know, a hundred percent artist, not just a performer? Uh, you're talking new artists. Or pe- yeah, people new artists come that come to you. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still uh, senior vice president of A&R over at Motown Records. Okay. So uh, now the the, the people that know that now I get a lot more people coming up to me with their music and asking me to listen to their stuff. They got CDs, jump drives, a whole nine. And uh, the first question I always ask is, OK, if there was no money in this, <clears throat> no money, no fame, would you still do it? And you'd be surprised how many people say no. They just no, no. I want, I want the fame. I want the this. I want the that. Okay, well, thank you for your time, deuces. Because it takes more than just being able to sing good, being able to rap good, uh, looking good in a, in a in a short skirt or something. It takes more than that to be successful at this. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to have at least some sort of business mind. Even me, like I, my business mind is not what it needs to be, but it's but at, at the very least, I understand that there's more to this than just the art. That's mm-hmm. one thing. And then when it comes to the art, you have to have some sort of passion about the art. Okay. There's a million things. It's 2015. There's a million different things you can do to make money. Okay. Art should not be based off of commerce. At least that's my personal opinion. This is one man's opinion. Everybody don't get mad at me. But I personally feel like art should never be based off of commerce. That shouldn't be the motivating factor to why you are producing your art, whatever that art may be. You know, I feel like it should be passion. You, this should be something that you should do because you love it, not because you want to make some money or you want to hear people scream your name. Super producer, artist, writer, everything. Neo is in the building, and, and he just does so so much. I he cook does a so bit much. Too. But first, let me just make a picture for cook. the ladies because cook. they want to be ahead, able Mo. to visualize Neo. Sure. And of course, we'll post the radio. pictures. It is radio. The so um, you would be if we were in college together. Mm-hmm. We'd probably date. Um, you'd be like the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I like how she just ran that over. We you, we'd probably date. Oh, uh, so you'd be. <laughs> Just ran that right over. It's all right. It's all good. Because okay. you do. Yes, continue, you, please. You have okay. a very humble, approachable, you know, but yet I'm um, handling my business type of aura about yourself. And so is that so do you think a lot about, you know, how you I, I've watched you on show. You're never raunchy. It's always mm. like classy, entertaining. It, you know, it's edgy, but all. Do you really think about that image? That, Absolutely. Yeah. And is, Absolutely. is it? Yeah. OK. It is 100 percent on purpose. Uh, first and foremost, fear of my mom. Uh, has a lot to do with with, uh, how humble I I try to be. Mm. Uh, uh, My mom raised me to understand that uh, you're going to be good at some things, you're going to be great at some things, but understand that you are not the greatest at anything. You know, in everything that you do, the honor is supposed to go up. So with that being said, you're not supposed to walk around like you're the best thing since sliced bread. You're not supposed to walk around uh, expecting people to praise you because you are a human being just like everybody else. These, Mm. These are my mom's words. This is the way that she raised us. So... Uh, everything that's that's been given to me at this point or everything that I've worked for, everything that I've achieved at this point, I am 100 percent aware of the fact that it is a blessing and I view it as such. And uh, you can't be you can't be boisterous about a blessing. It's not it's not how it's supposed to work. It's not how it works. 
how do you balance time between now you're a father, you're the family man, and putting on a new album that's going to require you to hit the road again? Um, I will say thank God for FaceTime. Uh, I do not mm-hmm. get to spend a whole lot of time at home. That's kind of the the double edged sword to success. Mm-hmm. It's like you know, once you are you know, once you get to a place where you're sought after, you know, it's absolutely a blessing. But then that means that you don't get to be at home with kids as much mm-hmm. as you would like to. Mm-hmm. You know, but on the other side of that, the fact that you are out and sought after is the reason that your kids get to flourish. You know, I, I feed my children doing what it is that I do. So, um, I mean, it's it's, it's hard. You know, I, I thank God for their mom. Shout out to Mo Monietta Shaw. Thank God for my mom. Uh, my sister, the people that the people that help me, uh, you know, make sure that these kids understand that that daddy is working for you. You know, you know, that's the hardest part is balancing family. But for you, what would it take for a woman like Mo said? You'd probably be dating her in college. But mm-hmm. now that you are the man that you are, what impresses you about a woman? Um, above all, uh, knowledge of worth knowledge of self mm. um there's there's nothing sexier than a woman that knows what she's worth and walks like that you know what i mean right like like she has to she has to understand that that uh it, i'm more than just you know this body i'm more than just this face there's a brain in here and if you can't if you can't rock with this then the rest of it you know it's kind of a package deal if you can't rock with this you can't get the rest of it like that's that's the sexiest thing in the world to I me mean, confidence. confidence a woman that's gonna make you work for it a little bit uh you know i'm i've gotten to the point in my career where uh, there's not too many things that I can't just have if I want it, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but when it comes to, you know, when it comes to somebody that you are thinking about spending some time with, spending your life with, I mean, I'm 35. I'm, I'm too old to be a boyfriend at this point. I'm sorry. So if I'm if I'm courting you on some, like, let's get together, I'm courting you for the future mm-hmm. at this point. So and, who and are it's you courting right now more. for the future? I'm sorry? So who are you courting right now? Well, I don't know. What you doing like? <laughs> <laughs> We're joined by Neo, Indeed. a brand new album called Nonfiction. Why yes. the title? Nonfiction because every single song on this album is a 100% true story or based on a 100% true story. Uh, a lot of rather colorful things have gone on with me over the last couple of years, you know, from from the separation of me and the mother of my children uh, to just, just what it is to be me at this point, you know. So I definitely touch on a lot of that. But uh, in that this is album number six for me in a business where you might get one song and then fade off into oblivion, mm-hmm. at in that I'm at album number six, right. I know that that's because of my fans. My fans have been the ones that have kept me around and I am 100% grateful for that. So I wanted to do something kind of special with this album. So what I did was uh, I got on my social media, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, and uh, I basically just started asking kind of vague, random questions. Uh, tell me about your relationship. Go. Uh, who has a girlfriend that does something annoying? Go. You know, and just let people, you know, get their 140 character ramble on right quick. So the stories that I really dug, I would then follow that person if I wasn't already following them. And then uh, we would continue the conversation in the DMs, and then I would take these conversations and turn them into songs. So about wow. half the songs on this album are based off of 100% true stories given to me by my fans. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, okay, so let's talk about the true story of She Knows, because mm-hmm. um, I love the song. It's a very that, that, sick... That or, that or, yeah, we play it. I mean, <laughs> I love it. Um, there's a lot of women in that video Indeed. that, you know, you probably wouldn't normally run into in the um, drugstore or library or park. Oh, we do, Mo. Park. We do. We do. Um, mm, yeah. we do. You don't, but we do. Yeah. <laughs> we do. Mm-hmm. So what is the truth? Yeah, I'm sure you do. What is the true story behind She Knows? Uh, the truth behind She Knows... Uh, it's, it's she knows is a part of of a story is a part as a part of an uh, an individual part of a story. See when you get the album, uh, when you go from start to finish, you'll you'll realize that uh, the concept behind this album is that there's a story being told throughout the whole thing, okay. mm-hmm. and it's just one part of a story. Like okay. I dig the fact that people are really digging the joint, but when you listen to the album and listen to it in continuation with everything else, you'll totally understand what it is and why it is. Okay, in its sequential order, like first number one, two, three, like Absolutely. that. Okay, Absolutely. All right. The awesome. song itself though is is based on. I mean. To the untrained eye, you would think that it's a song about strippers. To the untrained eye. And it's all good because to a degree, it is. But that's not the only type of woman I'm talking about. I'm talking about confident women. I'm talking about that, that woman that walks into the room, chest is out, chin is up. And she, and knows. she just knows yeah. how bad she is. Yeah. She's aware. You know, you want this, you're going to have to come with your A game. Like, th- that's who the song is about. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, I've see, I see on the album you have a lot of people, and I was very interested to see if you were going to go back with Pitbull mm-hmm. and David Guetta mm-hmm. and do something like that. Like, that world music is just taking off everywhere, and oh, yeah. you're just, like, accepted in so many genres. Mm-hmm. I was hoping you were going to do that. Had to. Had to. Um, I knew that this album was going to be predominantly R&B from the very, very beginning. Uh, I don't normally let what I hear about myself on, you know, 
uh, uh, blog sites and whatnot bother me. But when I started reading people saying stuff like Neo doesn't do R&B music anymore, Neo abandoned R&B, that got under my skin a little mm. bit. Like, are y'all see? Like, I couldn't. I could never abandon R&B. It's woven into my DNA. Mm-hmm. Like, R&B is the reason that I've even been allowed to move over and do some pop stuff over here or some EDM over here. But I always come back. R&B is home. I'm gonna jump off the porch every now and then. I'm gonna explore the neighborhood, but I'm always come back home. So this album is kind of a reminder of that. But then on the other side of the same card, I now have a fan base in these other genres, mm-hmm. and I can't just leave them high and dry. So I had to make sure that. Everybody that called themselves a Neo fan had something to latch onto with this album. Neo, his new album called Nonfiction is in stores Tuesday, January 27th and yes. online. Make sure you pick it up. So many hits already off the so album many. that are floating everywhere. But you got a story you want to tell them. Yeah, so when Miss Independent came out, my daughter, she's 16 now, but she was much younger. Mm-hmm. And we used to sing it in the car and everything. And that's then well. one day we were singing it and she turned to me and she said, Mommy, that's you. You do everything on your own and you have your own house and your own. And it really made me cry. Because That's cool. it That's well, cool. it made me cry in a sad mm-hmm. way because I thought that she felt that that song made it seem like I didn't need a man. Mm. And so I sat her down and we went through it like verse by verse. And we talked about women can have, you know, be independent and get their own things. And it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that you don't need a man in your life to do the things, you know, that make the whole thing complete. So I've used that song to sit down with a lot of women to talk to them about not throwing the Miss Independent around in their man's face so that it makes a man want to turn around and walk away. So I just want to let you know that that song had such an impact on opening up a conversation about so many women that suffer from thinking they can do it on their own without a man. I uh, that is, It's really interesting that you say that because I, I normally get a lot of flack from guys about the songs that I write that are, you know, dedicated towards women and, and women just kind of, you know, doing their own thing and, and, and offending for self. The song is based off of the women that I grew up with. I grew up with my mother, my sister, my grandmother, and five aunts. Mm-hmm. And these were all women that were the epitome of Miss Independent, meaning, okay, I, I I want a man, but I don't need a man. Meaning that I, the rent got to be paid, which means I'm gonna get I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna work and I'm gonna pay this rent. You know, the tire has to be changed and it ain't nobody around to change it, so I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna get my hands dirty and I'm gonna change this tire. Mm-hmm. These are the kind of women that I grew up with. Now uh, I know a lot of women. I know a lot of successful women, business women that. Uh, don't under, don't that kind of kind of took the concept and, and went that way with it. Yeah, feeling like okay, yeah. well, I don't I don't need a man for nothing. I'm right. I'm not saying to be by yourself. You know, like I understand that to 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 for a woman to excel in the world of business, you kind of have to develop a uh, pardon my French, but a, a, a boss B type attitude, Absolutely. right? But see, the thing is, you can't take boss B home the, to your right. man. That's he right. don't want Boss B. B, B mm. Boss B in the world. Right. And then mm. you get home, be what what that man deserves, should sure. that man deserve it. You know sure. what I mean? That's, but that's what I just think about. sometimes when you have songs that are so wildly popular like mm-hmm. that one was, women will take it and use it for whatever serves their purpose. Right, you know, right. and I wanted to make sure, you know, that my little baby girl watching me and thinking that that was what I was making that song into, that I wanted her to know that I was correcting my life so that I wouldn't do that again in my next relationship. And I wouldn't, you know, try to become that bo- at home. Right, you know, right, so right. I just, I think that yeah, that's she doesn't do that... it at home. She just does it at work. There you go. <laughs> but that, it's all good though, because that's where you're supposed to do it. That's where you're supposed to do it. She just does it. it at work, man. She Be the boss at work. work, and then go there home you go. And, and you know do right by that man <laughs> if he's around. All right, let me yeah. just ask one question. We got to go, but one question: If there's a woman who runs into you, what does a woman have to do, and what does Neo <laughs> like to do on a date with a beautiful woman? On a date with a beautiful woman. All right, well, if you are trying to get my attention, uh, 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 do not run up on me like a fan. Okay, because if you run up on me like a fan, oh my god, 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 I'm already, I'm already painting a picture in my mind of who you are. Mind you, I don't know you, but this is, this is what you're showing me. Right. And first impressions count. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you're trying to get my That's attention nice. in that way, run up on me like a regular person. Okay, run up like, on me hi, and, Neil, and say hi. Exactly. You know, introduce yourself. And then let's let's carry it from there. Don't run up on me. Oh my God, I love all your music. Can I take a picture? And uh, and here's my number, by the way. No, no, no. You 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 lost the fight before you started fighting. And then as far as dating, um, I'm a, I'm a pretty simple dude, man. I don't really I don't really need the the you know the the glitz and the glamour and all of that. And my thing now is like dive bars. Like we can go to a, a regular bar mm-hmm. and sit and have a drink and just try to have a genuine and real conversation. Conversation goes for a lot nowadays, especially now. 
been in the business about 10 years. There's nothing physically that you can do that I ain't already experienced or seen or whatever the case may be. So now it's about what's what's going on between your ears is what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. You know, wow. the thing between your legs, that's fine, cool, fine, and good. Love it. Absolutely do. However, that's not going to keep my attention. Mm-hmm. Okay, What's between your ears is going to keep the attention. That, and that's what, that's what your goal is, to keep my attention. All right, wow. Neo, our special guest on the Frank Ski Show. Indeed. Thank you for stopping by, partner. Thank you for having me, man. man. Good to see you. Three to seven, eight, eight, man. You already know. Introducing the Frank Ski Show. So lock it in and turn it on.